So with the shuttle company and the line of work I do, I see a lot of bikes, maintain a lot of bikes, ride a lot of bikes, and thanks to the way my brain works, I seem to have a million ideas of how I can make them better. Whether those ideas are any good or not is up for debate. So in these crazy times, with lockdown keeping me out of the workshop and in the interest of staying sane, I'm challenging myself to design, prototype and hopefully ride all these crazy products that have been bouncing around my head for years. So this is the 48 hour design challenge by condition. Right, so this is the second video in this series. Uh, if you want to watch the first one, it should be up there. I made a pretty cool little bike bag for my bike. Now, the second video, I wanted to tackle the pedals. These are my old SPD pedals. These are the Shimano, what are they? PDM 520s. So these are probably the cheapest ones that you can find. I think they're like 60 bucks, New Zealand. Um, super cheap, I rode countless miles with these I'm I love them but I just made the big upgrade to the XTR pedal the one with the little platform what I was finding with these I was relying on being clipped in the whole time um, having that little platform has really helped the thing that I can't quite understand though is that these are 60 bucks and these these are $270 which is ridiculous the only difference I can kind of see is, see the, the mechanism itself is still exactly the same. The, the only difference I can kind of see is obviously the platform and then the the shaft on them, on the on the XTRs, stainless steels. I think they got stainless steel bearings inside. Um, yeah, I don't see a $200 difference though. So, plan with this one is to take these old pedals of mine and create a kind of clip-on platform. I have seen them before, and I'll, I'll link it, I'll show a photo, I'll show a photo, uh, where you can have a little cleat and then a platform goes on top of the cleat. That's not quite what I'm after. I'm after something that turns this pedal into something similar to the XDR itself. So you can still clip in on both sides of the pedal, but you have got a much bigger platform for your foot to sit on if you aren't clipped in. Time in the last video you would have seen me set up a reference sketch. I am going to do exactly the same now. The only difference is I'll do a different technique. In the last one I just kind of built from measurements. What I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to take reference photos with a measurement and then translate that into some sketches and 3D models. I'll show you that. So jumping into Fusion you can see that I take those photos and assign each one to a specific plane in the model. I then mess around and making sure that they are the, all the right sizes and then it can start modeling off those sketches. It's a little bit fiddly and a bit of back and forth and difficult to see what's going on but slowly but surely it kind of starts to take shape. Here I'm just going for basic shapes. I'm not worried too much about if it's perfect or not. We're not looking for an absolutely pristine 3D model. We're just looking for something that we can reference geometry off. Once I've got something I'm happy with, I chucked it on for a print. First one came off the printer. It's a little big. I must have done one of the one of the pictures out of scale. The you can see the size is probably right that way, but that way not so much. So I went in there. Once you've kind of got it, you can just scale it by percentage. So there's a few little bits that aren't quite perfect yet, but I know that I've at least got a little model that I can model off. Um, I will link all of these down below, all these pieces, I don't know why you would want a model like this, but if you did, it's there. So back into Fusion and I set up an assembly. This is really helpful for kind of isolating all the parts. It also means that you can hide things pretty easily. So referencing off the little model that I made earlier, I was able to start chipping away at the first half of this print. Then what I did is I printed everything out and let's just say made it fit, I could then take those measurements, go back into Fusion and print a piece that actually fits perfectly. After that print, I know that the reference geometry is perfect and I can keep modeling the rest of the clip. To be honest, I wasn't sure how I was going to get it to go like actually fit around the model, but it wasn't until I split the part in half that it kind of started to take shape. So this should sit... Like 
Und jetzt genauso. <lacht> so, also, I got the clipping mechanism done. And now for the bit that I didn't actually even thought about yet, which was the platform itself. I didn't really have much time left. I had to get this print on before the end of the day so that it could print overnight. So I just knocked out a few little uh, basic sketches and started to make sure that I got the fixing system close to right. Uh, you will see later that this might have needed a bit more attention. Yeah, spoilers. The treads, same story here. I wish I'd kind of spent a bit more time playing around with them. Time was at the essence. This is a 48 hour challenge. I got the print on just before I went to bed and it printed overnight. So fingers, fingers crossed that it comes out all right. Okay, so I had a print on overnight. This is what I look like first thing. So hopefully, it was about a six and a half hour print. Hopefully it's perfect. I haven't had a look yet. Ooh. Oh yeah, look at that. Alright, let's get him out. Get him riding. If this print didn't work today, I wouldn't have made my deadline, so yeah. Right, so after a lot of printing all of yesterday, I popped these on as you saw, they came out pretty amazing, I'm pretty stoked on them. The one thing that I can't really change now is that only one of the one of the little holes, I've got these little, I'm not sure what these nuts are called, little nut and bolt, I've got those and that was, the plan was to fix through the, through the sides and that would hold it all in, I'm not sure what happened, either it was the print tolerances or the distances I put in, but the one hole doesn't work. The other one does with a bit of persuasion, uh, but it's holding. So what we'll do, I'll put it on this one. Jeez. Okay, so which way do they go? I wanted a really kind of positive click in. It is there. So they clip just like that. So that's one side clipped on. The second one clips on there. All right, and they're in. So now you would be able to put two of these, and I will update it in the in the final file. You will be able to put two of these, but for now, one's one's gonna have to do. So a few things I would have done differently had I had a little bit more time, and I'll probably I'll probably tuck into that later. Um, I probably printed in a different material. This is PLA. It is quite a brittle material. It it keeps its it keeps its shape really nicely when you print, so it's really perfect for just banging out all of these. I'd probably try a PETG or or ABS. I I. Yeah, something a bit stronger, something a bit more robust for the final stuff, but I'm pretty happy with that. Also, I guess what's pretty cool about them is that, you know, I know that the, the system itself works, this this kind of clip, two-part clip system, I know that that works, so now you can play around with the profile itself. Um, you can also play around with different treads. That's what's cool about it. You know, we can quite quickly try different different tread patterns, different size, different size platforms. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think it might be time to go for a ride. Okay, so Lane's bike has the new pedals on it. And mine has the XDRs on it. We'll ride one, one way and one the other and get a bit of a comparison.
put a two-book on here. <laughs> yeah, one leg clipped in, one lap not. And if I break it, that's how it happens. Alright, so that was clipped in, pretty mundane, but I'm going to try, I'm still getting used to riding on flats. I just kind of keep putting my foot on the pedal and it clips in anyway, so I'll try my best, we we'll see how we go. Rope just where because I didn't put that second bolt in, and because I printed everything in this axis. Actual weak point. I think you print it like that. So this is still pretty strong. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, yes, it broke, but it, it broke for reasons that I knew it might. Um, like I said before we left, the material's not quite right, The also the fact that it didn't have an extra screw, also not quite right. I think combination of those two would would yield something that could actually work. The, the, the fit works, um, you know, works while you're riding, you can clip in and out pretty easy. I am pretty happy with all that. Um, what I might do is I might upload it to Shapeways, have a little squiz there on uh, how much it would cost to print them in uh, SLS nylon. I think that that would be like the perfect uh, material for this job. Uh, flexible, but still quite strong. Broke, but that's why we went out and rode it. You gotta test these things. The, I'm pretty happy, I'm pretty happy. If you wanna download all the files, I'll link everything down below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you did have any other ideas or things you would have done differently, bang them down below. I'd love to hear from you. It's been quite a cool little series. Next, I think I'm gonna tackle the mud guard. I'm thinking parametric kind of mud guard, so pretty excited there. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you later.